Hi, my name is Tomer Kimchi. I'm from Synaptics, and we're showing today the user presence detection inside an office environment. And um, what does it mean, a user presence detection? This is basically how you leverage AI to real use cases, real life, day to day, in the office environment, which is full content, user based, meaning not just in face detection and a general human detection but at ID-based features experiences. And we'll see those uh, user experiences later on. So how does it work? Well, basically it all started with this tiny chip, chip over there. <laughs> yeah. This is the SVP 7000. This is a full edge AI, neural processing unit powered, uh, ultra low power, a lot of Buzzwords, but this is this is basically the ultimate milliwatt scale, fully capable, rich interface, understanding the user content. You can see here the identity, full head pose, dins, uh, distance information, facial landmarks, and we're using this information to control different types of experience. One of which we just recently added. You can see a gesture control, very conveniently controlling mute button and unmute. And this type will run always on without the needing of streaming those video to the main SOC. So ultra low power and fully private. All information is not being stored, all inference on chat. So um, can you show some demonstration what it's good for? Good. Good question. Um, generally, everybody speaks about AI. The question is how you leverage AI to the real life. Uh, so this is a very common uh, uh, office environment today. I got my multiple monitors and multiple sensors to create a smart space. The smart space will uh, get my information to control different kind of use cases. One of which, uh, very common one, I keep on losing my mouse cursor not knowing from this multiple screen. However, with this type of technology, I can, with a head turn, just pop cursor from one screen to another. That's awesome. S similarly, I can just drop and drop, uh, drop this window from one location just to another. So this is one example. What's not the lag so far? Uh, lag? Yeah, uh, can it be instant? Well, it is instant. This is a sub. This is a sub uh, 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 frame rate at a like five or ten frame rate uh, FPS, uh, and this is really responsive. We'll, we'll, I'll show you in a moment some of the identity uh, use cases. But how, how to make it fully uh, uh, real time? Uh, is it a question of? integration with the Windows or with the OS to make the best integration of this software, of this solution? So this is fully hardware-based Edge AI, meaning that no lags on the Edge AI part. For the user experience, we're deciding what type of things that pleasing the users. Uh, one example that I want to show you is in a non-privacy environment, I can uh, create my blur effect to the screens that I'm not looking at. And this is again head pose base where I'm looking at. The other ones will be blurred. But primarily, when you ask about user detection, uh, people can, you know, stand here while I'm just walking away from my station, my own station, and immediately it will be blurred. Now, awesome. you were talking about lag. Keep checking this one. Coming back to the workstation. Immediately it pops and I can keep on working. Nice. How yeah. does it compare with the, uh, 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 what do you call it, face ID kind of uh, 3D scanning of a face to have a maximum security or does it use 3D? So it doesn't use 3D. Authentication is being done with the OS, Microsoft Control, so we are not doing authentication. However, we're complementing Microsoft authentication. Once they authenticate it, so I can log in with a password or pin code or a fingerprint. Once you logged in, this is where we're taking the lead, we're taking the control and doing the face ID. Now this is not a 3D imaging, so 
It's an ultra low power, uh, tiny chip, and of course, a foldable. So that's so awesome. When the kids come to the computer, they'll be in the game mode, right? Yep. They yep. will not see any of the documents, any of the work. They will not mess around with my Google Drive or whatever. Correct. And the kids and get just directly to their games or something, right? Yep. Yep. That's correct. And let's say that I'm walking away and you're my kid and you want to temper and, you know, log in. So you can try and just hit a click and it will automatically will lock. Lock. Nice. So not only it preserves the privacy. You should just open Solitaire. <laughs> so I can just do something. <laughs> yeah, yes. Potential, I mean, it's just a question of uh, software decisions, Correct. right? Yeah, th th this is the experiences. So you got the strong engine, <coughs> and you build upon it, and you can add those experiences. That's, that's a powerful thing with uh, Edge AI, that you can add more neural networks. Now, I, I want to show you. Oh, sorry. Just go ahead. Now, I want to show you an yet another experience, but I'll, I'll use a colleague to, uh, uh, to show you that. But you want to ask? Yeah, I, 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 I don't understand how you can do all this with a tiny chip like this. What is, um, well, it's what is the architecture of this chip? Well, it's amazing today. This, this has actually got four different cores, two MCUs and two NPUs. Um, so it's quite amazing. These are the things that we never thought of, like, five years ago, and quite frankly, even three years ago. So the progress with the node architecture, and uh, we combine this with our secret sauce IPs inside, and this allows us to you know, bring this type of technology in this it, tiny chip. Is there like an ARM uh, core in there? There's, there's also an ARM core. It's, it's a combination of ARM cores, MCU, NPU, and our own uh, homegrown NPU. How much potential customization of features could be done in here with your collaborating companies and everything? What's, in, the, what's the limit? In, in, in both ways. Both on the film side, algorithm and everything, it's trainable models. We can add features very, very conveniently. That's on edge. Experiences, this is even more. With our software stack, we, you can build and upgrade more and more experiences like the one you suggested. Because when you were doing the mute, it was kind of fun, but maybe there's some other kind of like uh, potential tricks that would really it's, it's be just, easier or maybe customizable. Ju just a matter of cu customization. You know, we can add models very, very easily. That's, the, that's a powerful deep learning in the technology. Uh, what's the advantage of doing this on your chip compared to doing it on the main SOC or the main chip of the huge chip that's in the laptop, for example, this Intel so, Core or something? So many, I'll name two. The first one is privacy. People don't like the video being streamed constantly stream to the SOC with connectivity and everything. This is on chip. All the identities that I just showed you, it's all being done on chip. So fully NIST compliance, fully private and everything. Offline? Off, I mean, this is on chip. Nothing, nothing goes to the cloud? Nothing goes go to the cloud, nothing is being stored. This is one. Second, power consumption. Where SOC is like a power plant, this one is actually working always on. So the computer can be in a hibernation mode. Everything is going down, but this is constantly tracking me wherever I'm uh, approaching. It can wake up on, on that approach. So power consumption and privacy, those are the main ones. Because I, I love these new uh, uh, certain, for example, ARM laptops have 30 hour battery life, very long. And if this is always on, how much of that is going to sip the power? So we're talking about, there, there are very strict regulation of what is the power consumption. We're talking about milliwatts, whereas once the SOC is on, those are watts. So it's, it's three orders of magnitudes between the difference between the two. So it might be on for a month on the well, battery. Using only, only this. But the idea is that this collaborates with the active mode. So we're not replacing the SOC. And uh, uh, what is this camera here? Is it just a development just, kit? Just, just a development kit. But it, typically it will look like something like that. So you have the chip and, and then you have the uh, uh, CMOS sensor. What else is on this little stick? Well, the type, the, the, the type of these camera models can contain some microphones and flash components and uh, crystals. But for our technology, you just need the silicon and you need the CMOS sensor. That's it. This is my 
uh, office environment, I have typically have my laptop, I have my monitor, and I have two cameras. Doing this phone call, I'd like to, you to have my frontal view. So working from one side to another, it basically auto-direct and auto-replace the uh, uh, head pose in order for you to see my frontal view from one to another. And this is fully integrated into Zoom or into Teams. So we're virtualizing the stream and working from one to another very smoothly, it will swap. So uh, is it in there, the, the little chip? So here we have uh, this kind of chip, but emulated. And in, in this, in this yeah. case. Yeah. So it could be uh, right there where the webcam exactly. is, in the board there? That's, clear. that's exactly it. That's awesome. That, that's exactly it. So people are going to be buying like 12 laptops to have all this kind of fancy moving around? We hope so. No limits? <laughs> we hope so. 12 displays, man. Oh, 12 displays. Or actually, it can be also as an accessory as part of the web camera. So the web camera can include uh, this kind of uh, sensing. Uh, this this potentially adds uh, webcam functionality to monitor PC monitor market because so, suddenly you can have extra. It it can be kept as a sensor, or extended to a web camera. It's it's up to the OEM to decide. 